because it wasn't on. So just to review, um, today I'm really talking about how there's not that many classes left. I think, you know, after today, Monday's Memorial Day, so we won't have class. We'll only have three classes left. And uh, there are there are many assignments that many of you are missing. And I just want to make sure you're all aware of what needs to be done and that you're on track to complete it. And, and I want to hear from you if there's going to be a problem with completing those assignments or also if you know you you thought maybe the workload was too much and and i don't think it was but basically we're supposed to head into unit five here we put it off um on monday and i instead talked about how you could do 6.010 artwork assignment which is 6.0 10 studio which is a collage and that you could replace that for one of the other artwork assignments okay so there were three artwork assignments that were assigned one was the clay and the drawing oops where's the clay there's and the drawing of the clay assignment the other was the Impressionist and Realist paintings. And then the third was this mixed media um, that I said you could replace either of those with. So you only have to do two artwork assignments. I mean, then I want to make sure you know all of the quizzes that you need to do. And I want to give you time to complete those before moving into unit five, because I feel it would be irresponsible to move into unit five until those graded assignments are completed. So I guess what I'm saying is for today, if you are completed with all the graded assignments, and that would mean all of the quizzes, and, and two of the three artwork assignments, then you could be working on unit five and you could be reading in the modules unit five during this time. Like I think that would be a great use of your time. I will say that, it, this, that I'm not really planning on assessing you at unit five. So if you do have other work where you're being assessed on, you might want to you might want to do that now for the rest of you that are like if you're not up to date if you have not completed all of the quizzes and all of the and two of the three artwork assignments then i want you to use this time to ask me questions um to say hey i didn't complete like let's say you didn't complete the 3.06 quiz on impressionism then do you want me to review it with you because i'm prepared right now to pop it up on the screen and review it with you and then that will help you take the quiz so that's why i want you guys to use this time um or if you're having trouble or you you need to show me your artwork assignment we can go in another room you can show me your artwork and you can say is this good enough? What do I need to do to finish it? But I want this to be actual, you know, I want you to communicate with me during this time frame because it's not a lot of time and we only have three classes. And, you know, June 10th, in our class on June 10th, I, I'm hoping to just share some artwork. Maybe I'll have an interesting video for you. We can chat a little. I mean, we're not going to be doing work on June 10th. It has to be being handed in on June 10th. So when you think about it, we only really have two more classes. And I can't, can't um, start assessing you on Unit 5 until everyone's gotten there. Or at least, you know, the majority of us have gotten there. So I want to use today to, 
to get there. Um, so is there anybody, you know, is there any questions or anybody need help or want me to review? Well, first, let me tell you what I'll do. And you can stop me and like poking any time in the chat and let me know what you'd like me to review. I'll just st start off and say, these are the assignments, you know, and you can kind of just go through, you can write it down, but the quizzes were 1.02. When we talked about the Baroque in Italy, we talked about sculpture 1.02, painting 1.04. Um, the Baroque in Spain and France, this was in Italy, um, that was quiz 1.05. Baroque in the Netherlands, that was quiz 1.06. And then we really bridged um, from the Baroque to the Enlightenment here in, in 1.10, quiz 1.10. So if you're missing any of these, I could go through it right now. It pretty, you know, a lot of the information I have comes right from the coursework. It comes right from the quizzes and so if i reviewed it with you it would definitely help so so and then we did um quiz 111 and these are short quizzes they're only three questions and they're based on like short readings and then we we reinforce those in class so um here's the 1.1.12 1. 1. romantic art we really talked about the impact of the revolution. And we even talked about like environmental um, things that were going on, like Krakatoa that may be impacted, you know, people's ability to grow food that maybe impacted the peasant revolution that impacted the artwork. You know, so, you know, there's a lot of connections there. And, um, and so if you want me to review any of these, um, there's the 3.02 quiz. 3.03 quiz, 3.05 quiz, which now we're, we're, okay, so we went from romantic art to realism and naturalism and to um, impressionism, which is, you know, that funny transition from everything looking, from the everyday people picking eggs and setting tables but in a realistic way to to oh gosh what is it um the like for example the water lilies you know which is meant to look real but meant to look like the the light is supposed to look like the way the light plays on on reality you know but then we went from there to let to art that was really not meant to look real that was completely symbolic and we talked and last time and then we talked about post-impressionism i'm sorry in gauguin and um van gogh in 3.09 and 3.010 so i can review those quizzes for you 3.09 and 3.010 if you haven't taken those um, and then we talked about, I think it was last time, uh, symbolism in late 19th century painting. And we talked about um, Edward Monk and the screen. So I can review that if you didn't take the 3.12 quiz. So that's where we stopped. And if you go to the course work, or if you even look at today, you shouldn't have any other quizzes due beyond that, I don't believe. So if like if anybody sees anything else do beyond that, that's at this point, that's a mistake. And I'm not sure, like what I'm saying is the last, this last unit is unit five. I'm not sure I want to kind of go into that. And I'm not sure I'll be assessing you on unit five. But is that if you are completed with all of these quizzes? And then you've also completed the 4.05 studio, which is the impressionist painting and realist painting so it was just two paintings of the same thing trying to use the different um styles and then just to remind you because i think it's helpful this is the impressionist painting and 
the realist painting. Here we go. So can you see the different kind of like here? Let's try this one. Is that kind of this more, you know, it's out in the field. You could see how the artist is blending the colors and showing like the reality of being in the field and doing this work. And then the difference between that and the painting style of the water lilies, which is, oh, or even this one. This was one that I like to look at. Well, this is more post-impressionist, but it's very similar with the little dots. You know, this kind of impressionistic too. So if you've completed 4.05 or um, you can do the collage. I did demonstrate the collage. I, d I maybe don't have, I don't have any student examples to share with you, but you could replace the collage for the sculpture or for the um, impressionist realist painting. So it's just two of the artwork assignments. So I'm wondering, um, let's maybe take some time. I want you to go and see what you're missing. Ask me any questions. Maybe submit anything that you haven't submitted or just take some time and work. So I'm going to give you like five, 10 minutes. I can even create a bake breakout room. If anyone wants to talk one-on-one -on -one, or you can use the you know the question answer so i did see one in there i'm gonna go address it um so let me kind of just take a look at where everybody is at Anybody have any concerns with getting the work done? Okay, I'm going to check on that for you. Yeah, it looks like everybody is good with, with that. All right. I did show you that. And how do you guys feel about, I mean, I'm gonna just double check. And how many of you guys are up to date? Do you wanna just give me a thumbs up if you're, I could double check the gray book too while you're here. Monday we don't have class, but I could, move into favism and just not ass assess you on it or i could give you time to work on the collage next week and i think one other thing that we would do next week i mean we only we're not meeting monday right so it was to just be friday and then the following week, I think we, we would be doing is mostly just sharing artwork. And I, if anybody is not okay with that, maybe let me know. Um, and reviewing because I don't feel really like response, like it would be responsible to add any more assignments at this point when there is a, really a significant um, group of people who need to catch up and I, and I, I don't want to, um, I don't want to bury anybody. That is not my intention at all. Whoops. Where are you guys? Okay. So, 
Um, I'm going to just pop this. I'm going to, instead of me talking about Favism, oops, I'm going to um, pop this video on. And while I do that, I'll double check the grade book and I'll, while you guys are here. And if you have any questions, I'll answer them. Oh, good. I see a couple questions. Okay. But I don't want everybody to wait. Well, while um while i answer those questions so you guys can just watch this short um this short video i don't know on favism i don't know how well it'll explain it we'll see. I just wonder if you guys can, um, just from looking at that image and images we've seen of the Impressionists and the post-Impressionists, how this painting might naturally kind of evolve from the direction that artists had been taking all the way back from the realism movement. I mean, to me, it seems like a natural progression where things are kind of 
stripped down to their most elemental. Um, and that's like sort of my explanation of it. And they're sort of giving you more like explanation of the symbolic use of colors for the impressionisms, the play and light and, um, you know, the fobs, um, how they're influenced by the post-impressionisms, post-impressionists, but also, you know, how they differ. So I think that's the point, um, you know, of this video and really of, um, you know, the basic what, how that transition in art is made. Oops. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, basically, I, we were just talking about abstract art um, and how you can kind of see how abstract art would come from um, Favism. Okay. But, and, and, you know, really, we are sort of really progressing towards, I mean, I, you know, this is almost like abstract you know, but truly abstract where you can't name the thing, there's no context, there's no object. Um, that sort of is part of you know, this progression to like the basics, basic colors and shapes and forms as I see it anyway. So anyway, that was Favism. And that's where we start in unit five with this um, late 19th century, early 20th century painting. And you see a lot of it is centered around, still centered around France. Um, so what I'm gonna show you now, and, I, and so I wonder, okay, anybody, what I did, what I was trying to do while you guys were do that, doing that is just double checking to see what you guys were missing or if there was any help I could offer you, but my computer kept freezing up. So I wonder, 
if if anybody has any questions or you could also use the question and answer chat okay if you have any questions about it otherwise um i'm just going to show you a short oops um youtube on expressionism and just kind of encourage you that if you aren't caught up that since you're not going to really be assessed on unit five that you use this time to either work on those assignments or find out what you're missing and ask me to review it because as i said earlier in this class if you want me to review any of those i can even set up another room so everybody can still watch the expressionism video and we could go in that room and i could review any one of those quizzes so anybody any takers want me to review you know didn't complete the quiz let me know okay all right so if not i'm i'll try and get you know i'm gonna try and get through some of the uh, modern art movements that are discussed in unit five, but again, and, and you know, doing the reading is great, um, but those quizzes are not assigned. So, all right, so let me. Um, oops, is it here? Oh, let me, hold on. Okay, and I think in the last video, you, you did hear them kind of mention expressionism, and it is abstract expressionism. So we really are, you know, entering that abstract art movement that has lots of like sub movements. And, and so you can kind of see how, how the, the, it progress, how it progresses. Okay, so um, you can see how some of it is some like here's Motherwell, which actually 
really like Motherwell. You might think this is strange. This doesn't look like a painting. Anybody could do that. It's very large, this painting. Um, but, you know, if you think about like breaking it down to the most elemental to describe and say something that you can't any other way, I feel like Robert Motherwell does this in this painting. And I choose to focus on Motherwell because I prefer Motherwell's paintings to de Kooning. De Kooning is in your coursework. Um, but to me, and, and so abstract expressionism, express, emote, can you feel the emotion in that painting? You guys can see the painting, right? With the black swishes and the red and the black circle. Um, so really about emotion, breaking down color, shape to its um, emotional impact, the impact it has on a person's like a core level. Um, but then you know, some artists will, will say they weren't using, they weren't necessarily using shape and color expressively, but but doing something else like de Kooning, which I, I'll show you a short video on de Kooning in a moment. And he's the artist that really they focus on in, in the lesson. Um, so that's really, and you can kind of see how that would come from the Fauvists, maybe you know, where, I mean, I think you could possibly see that, where things are really being broken down. And I think even better than that, there's the post-impressionists. But a really good example, I thought of that. Oh, where is it? Yeah, it's this window. That to me, there's an element of ab abstract expressionism in that. And that painting for me really like makes that transition a lot for me. You know, maybe not to something like this, <laughs> but to, let's see, where was it? Um, maybe to something like, where is it? That. Maybe. So these are the abstract expressionists. Yes, and Jackson Pollock made a lot of money. This is not Jackson Pollock, by the way. I think this is Joan Mitchell. Um, Jackson Pollocks are more drippy and monochromatic, I guess. Um, but made a lot of money throwing paint onto a canvas. And a lot of it was just about the culture at the time you know, the 1950s, there's shift in the late 50s, the shift that happens, you know. And he, and so a lot of artists are riding the wave of culture, you know, um, what's the word? Um, capitalizing on culture and what's happening culturally, I guess. That makes sense. Um, but anyway, uh, anybody, any takers? There's only two more minutes. So if you guys are all caught up, you can go. If you have any questions, you can stay and ask me. And I'm still willing to review anything that you're missing. Um, I hope you have a fabulous Memorial Day weekend. And... Thank you. And I'm here if you need me for anything else. For You know, I'll be here for a few more minutes. Bye.